What is Casper.js? Casper.js is defined on their website as a navigation scripting and testing utility for the Phantom.js WebKit headless browser. It provides useful high-level functions, methods, and syntactic sugar for doing common tasks. These common tasks include defining and ordering navigation steps, filling in and submitting forms, clicking and following links, capturing screenshots of a web page, testing remote DOM, downloading resources, writing functional tests, and scraping web contents. Web scraping is of course the focus of this course and we'll be using most of these common tasks when writing our own scripts. As mentioned, Casper provides helper methods that abstract away a lot of the code we would normally have to write if using PhantomJS just by itself. So let's take a quick look at a few of these methods now. In the Phantom API, there is no built-in way to wait for a selector to appear. So you might have a page that's retrieving some data in Ajax and you need to wait for the page to actually load before being able to grab that data. So here we can see an example of how to do this, of how to perform this action in the PhantomJS GitHub example docs. But in Casper, we're actually provided with handy methods like wait for that we can pass in a function and arguments as well as another method called wait for selector which will wait until any given selector is loaded before proceeding with our script. The code that we write in Casper will follow a pretty synchronous pattern. And if we were to compare this code that we write to the examples given in Phantom, they mostly follow an asynchronous pattern. So to show what I mean, let's take a look at a very commonly used method both in Casper and Phantom that's called evaluate. So evaluate does the same thing in either case, basically performs an action when it's invoked. So the action performed can be something like looking up an element or attribute and then grabbing the data. The example of evaluate in Phantom is asynchronous. So the entire action of opening a page, grabbing the page title, and logging a message is all done within the same function. Contrast this with the more synchronous nature of Casper in which we'll be using the then method. And the then method will act as an intermediary to pass along the execution of what's written in our scripts. So let's open up a file now and let's take a look at what I'm talking about so that you can understand a little more clear. And it's not important that you understand exactly what this code does. So you can see at the top, first we start Casper, we initiate an instance. Then after that, we have to wait for a selector to appear on the page before proceeding. Then once the selector has appeared in the page, we evaluate functions. And you can see these functions defined at the top of our page. And what they do is they do the work of grabbing our elements and the data obviously within the elements. And then once that's done, we dump the data into the console. We, we do a console log basically. So in the next video, we'll start digging into these Casper methods so you can start to understand the mostly synchronous workflow we'll be creating within our scripts.